Hi, I'm Ralph. Welcome to my kitchen. Today we are doing a video I ne never expected to be doing. Probably never really wanted to be doing. We're going to be dealing with bland meals. Bland meals? Ralph, why would you deal with bland meals? Because bland meals are often recommended by doctors or vets uh, for people that are recovering from being sick, from dogs that are having digestive issues, uh, or people coming off of extended fast and you're trying to get your digestive system willing and ready to accept food again. Uh, quite frankly, I've not been sick. I have not just come off a fast, as you can probably tell. You know, I am a recovered bulimic. Well, technically, semi-bulimic. I used to binge, but not purge. Um, so that leaves a dog with gastrointestinal issues. And he just gastrointestinal all over the place last night, causing us to go up to the, the vet clinic and stayed up there till probably midnight. Which brings me to tonight's meal, bland meals. Doctor recommended medication and bland meals. So the average person doesn't really know what a bland meal is. I mean, you might have heard the term, but generally we don't want a bland meal. We want an exciting meal. We want a flavorful meal. That's just the opposite of what a bland meal is. But sometimes you gotta make a bland meal. So I'm here tonight to help you make a couple of different bland meal choices. First, let's get started. I've got some sweet potatoes here. Sweet potatoes are great for a bland meal, and I'm going to puncture them. Assuming that you're not covering them with butter and brown sugar, you're just eating the sweet potato. That's all. By poking the skin, we're allowing the potato to let some steam escape. I'm putting those into the oven at 400 degrees. I've got a couple of boneless, skinless breast fillets here that I'm going to be putting into the water, making sure that they're fully covered. They look like they're fully covered. Going to crank that up to high heat, get that boiling. Once it comes to boiling, we're going to be boiling them. Um, maybe 15, 20 minutes. We're going to be checking the temperature, making sure that, that the temperature is up to a safe temperature for chicken. And at that point, we're going to be pulling them out. The water that's in there is not going to be thrown away. It's not going to be drained off. We are going to be using that water as a sort of a, a broth base that we're going to be putting onto the rice later on. So we're going to get a little double use out of this. Now you'll notice water boiling over here. That's going to be for the potatoes. You want to peel the potatoes. Peelings, not good for gastrointestinal problems. Probably going to have to add a little bit more water here to this. But not much. That water is basically already pretty hot. Now, oftentimes when you're boiling things like pasta, potatoes, you would have salt in that water. That also helps to keep it from boiling over. You don't want salt in it now because you can't have the salt in the diet for a bland meal. So we're going to be waiting on these things to be coming up to a boil. In the meantime, let's go back and work on the rice. Now rice, I've got one cup of rice here. Putting that into a large bowl. It doesn't really have to be that large, but I had one available. And we need to be rinsing the rice. So what we're gonna be doing is putting washing water in here, swirling it around, draining it off, doing that several times until the water starts running clear. You might be able to tell the water is very cloudy. That's from all the starch. In other parts of the world, sometimes you're also dealing with impurities 
that are mixed in with the rice. And so it's good to, to wash the rice to not only get that starch off, but a lot of the impurities. We've got the chicken starting to boil. Now, as soon as this actually comes up to a rolling boil, we're going to turn it down to a simmer and let it simmer for probably about 20 minutes. And then we're gonna come back and check the internal temperature of it. That's right, Gunner, I'm back. It's time to pull the potatoes off. I just checked on them and they seem to be getting nice and soft. So it's time to drain those. You can see you're, you can easily stick a fork in them. So we're going to get them all nice and drained. It'll be easy for, for Gunner to be eating on those. So we'll be back in just a moment. Okay, we're gonna to try to check out the chicken again. It's been about another five minutes. I love this chef's temp thermometer because you can flip it a full 270 degrees so that I can show you on the camera without it being in an awkward position. Gets right to 169, that's right where we need it to be. So we're gonna go ahead and pull all of our chicken. In the meantime, we're gonna save the water. We're gonna pour it off into the, the cup because we don't actually need all of it for the rice. For one cup of rice, we actually only need one and a half cups of water. So here we are, pouring it off. Pretty darn close. Our rice has been draining. Pop that in. Cover it with one and a half cups of water. One cup for one to one to the rice and an extra half cup for the uh, evaporation that's gonna happen while it's boiling and simmering. Back to the cooktop. Put it on there. Bring that up to a boil. As soon as we did it up to a boil, we're gonna be moving it down to simmer for the rest of the time that it's, it's cooking in here. But we're gonna be cubing the chicken. And no, I'm not serving Gunner two chicken breasts for dinner tonight. I am cooking it a little bit ahead of our needs for tomorrow as well. So I'm breaking it up into smaller chunks that we're gonna be keeping mostly in the refrigerator and using it as necessary. So there we have it. The cubed up, chunked up chicken. Wonder how that tastes. Don't wanna eat up all of this chicken. I'll try to look for a little piece here. It's juicy, but it is pretty bland. But I still think he's going to enjoy it. The bananas, by the way, they were a hit. He'd never had them before. He wasn't quite sure what to think about them, but after he tried them, he liked them. I'll bet your dog will too. Okay, I'm back trying to give Gunner his regular pill. I don't have one of those pill poppers. Gunner, come here. I'm gonna put it into peanut butter and let him lick it out of this bowl and see if he takes it at the same time. Come here, buddy. Here you go.
here. Well, I'm not so sure it was working, licking it out of the bowl. It would seem to be stuck to the peanut butter in the bowl while he was licking the peanut butter. But if I put a little bit into my hands, it all went into the mouth. So I feel pretty confident he got it. Now, after you've had it in there, during the, the simmering stage. At the end of that, you need to kind of mix it up because the heat at the bottom is gonna be a lot different from the heat at the top. So you wanna get the, the rice good and mixed up. And then it's going to, all the heat is off now. And we're just basically going to let it rest for about the next 10 minutes. But you see it's, it's looking pretty fluffy already. Check out my video on how to make rice. Another 10 minutes of rest. Be right back. Okay, we're back. The rice should be ready. Looks great. Time to start serving things up. Here we go. I'm going to put some of this rice in the bowl for Gunner here, and we'll save some for tomorrow. Just to see how it goes, and just in case he doesn't care for the rice, I'm going to put a few potatoes in there as well. Got some chicken pieces. Now Gunner's a pretty big dog. Obviously if your dog is smaller, you're not gonna put as much in. Now, we've got these little capsules. I don't know if he's gonna go for that rice, so I waited and I'm gonna put, break it open and just kind of sprinkle it on the potatoes and the chicken. We've got to put some of this gel in there, kind of a paste. And on top of that, I'm going to give him a few carrots. Canned carrots are perfect for this because they're already soft. They don't even need to be cooked. Pumpkin is the perfect thing to help kind of solidify things, shall we say. So just, that's equivalent to like two tablespoons, I think. It's a heaping helping. And the flavor, it's a good flavor, so it should kind of help cover up any of the medicine. That's how it looks. Almost looks good enough to eat. Almost. And we'll go and check on Gunner. See how he does with it. Here you go, buddy. You know, I think he likes it. I think he likes it a lot. So I'd have to call this a success. All that medicine that I put on top, he has eaten up every little bit of it. With that said, that's just one meal. We still have to get through tomorrow. Good morning, I'm back. Preparing the next bland meal for Gunner. I've already started with some of the things that we cooked up last night. I had them all bagged up. I've got the rice. I've got the white potatoes. I took the uh, sweet potatoes out of the oven last night after about 50, 60 minutes or so. They are perfect. I've now got those stins peeled away. Just gonna be cutting up some uh, 
slices to put into the base. I've already put some rice, some potatoes into his bowl, and I hid one of his capsules in the potatoes so he won't know. Uh, let me go ahead and get started with some of that meditation. Just those little pills can open up and you can just kind of sprinkle that powder on there. These syringes are kind of interesting. Get that gel pushed in there. Now I'm gonna be scrambling some eggs, which are gonna be going on top of the rice. I'm not gonna know that gel is even there. I'm gonna be cutting up some of those sweet potatoes to stick in here as well. I've got two eggs that I'm getting ready to scramble. Got the pan starting to preheat. Let me go ahead and crank that to the regular temperature. Now, I'm not adding anything to the eggs. It's just pure eggs. There's no seasoning in here. I don't have any butter in the pan. It's a nonstick pan. Now, a lot of people just freaked out about the nonstick pans because there, there were some warnings about some chemicals in there, the forever chemicals that could leach into your food. The pans that I use, do not have those chemicals in them. You'll find links to them down below, but none of the nonstick pans that I use use those chemicals. I checked that out. Now, go ahead and stick the eggs in there. Got them on kind of low, medium heat. Now, nonstick pans, theoretically, you shouldn't require butter because they're considered nonstick. However, if you actually read the directions that come with the pans when they arrive, or you do some research on them, they tell you to go ahead and put a little bit of oil or butter in there. Now, it doesn't take very much. And once you do that, Oftentimes when you're done, just kind of like a cast iron, you can get away with just wiping them, which will leave a little residue, like a seasoning of the oil on there, which will make it easier for these to stay non-stick. These scrambled eggs are coming out great. Okay, I think they're ready. Turn that off. We're back. Getting those scrambled eggs put into Gunner's dish. After all, presentation is everything, right? Now, you'll notice there's a little bit of residue in the pan. That's what these scrapers are for. If you have nonstick cookware and you don't have one of these scrapers, consider getting one. They are awesome. With that said, let me just put a couple of quick chunks of sweet potato in there. Even if you're not on a bland diet, sweet potatoes are good for your, your dogs because they do help keep them in a little bit better digestive state. So. That's looking pretty good, I think. Let's see how Gunner thinks about it. Gunner, let's eat. And there you have it. Gunner is happy. He downed that in probably just a couple of minutes straight. No pause, no hesitation. I think it's a success. So with that said, if you've got a sick one at home, if you have a sick dog, um, or if you're just coming off an extended fast and you need to get your digestive system 
used to eating food again. Land meals are not that hard and they can be a little bit more exciting than what you think. You can add some flavor with things like sweet potatoes and white potatoes. Just leave off the seasoning. That's it for the show. I hope you enjoyed it. Consider hitting the like and subscribe down below and directions down below as well. Thanks for joining us. We will catch you the next time.